on, called out of the world to please God. The real Christian who has repented of sin and he has received Christ the Savior, that Christ is now his Savior and his Lord. He is the person that is the called out man, the called out woman, the called out boy or girl. Actually, the word church means called out. And when you become a Christian, what does the Almighty God do? The Lord added to the church those that are saved. The church, the assembly of called out people. And when you are part of that assembly, not the worldly church, not the nominal church, not the traditional church, not the tribal church, not the denominational church, the church of the firstborn, the church of Jesus Christ, the church of God himself. It's the called out people, the assembly, the fellowship, the group, the congregation of called out people. And so that makes the Christian a called out man and a called out woman. In fact, Jesus Christ said, talking about those false believers that came to him in John chapter 17. John Chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 6. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. You gave them to me out of the world. If you are not yet out of the evil world, out of the evil system, you are not Christ's yet. You do not belong to Christ yet. It is when you come out of all the evil system of the world, and you come out of all the evil practices of the world, then you come to Christ. Because the Lord said, you gave them to me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. These are the people that know the Lord. And these are the people that keep the word of the Lord. There is an inner strength. And there is the grace of God in that person's life. He is able to obey. He is able to keep the word of the Lord. Look at verse 14. I have given them thy word. And the world has hated them. Because they are not of the world. Even as I am not of the world. You understand what that is saying? If you are a Christian, you are Christ's one, a Christ man, a Christ woman, a Christ boy, a Christ girl. And a Christ man, Christ woman, Christ boy, Christ girl will be as Christ, will live as Christ, and will not do what Christ will not do, will not partake of anything in the world that Christ will not partake of. I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. What does that mean? I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of their schools. Let them keep on going to school, but it will be different when they get there. They are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. I pray not that you'll take them out of the city. They'll still live in the city, but they'll be different from the people in the city. I'm not praying that you'll take them out of the police force so that no Christian will be a policeman. Let them remain in the police force, but they'll be different from the policemen of the world. I'm not praying you'll take them from the army. Let them remain in the army, but they'll be different from the soldiers of the world. I'm not praying that you'll take them out of the market. Let them remain in the market, but they be different from the people in the market. I'm not praying that you'll take them out of the village. Let them remain in the village, but they be different from the people in the village. That's what the Lord is saying. Don't take them out of the physical world. Yes, keep on living in your streets. Keep on living in your community. 
But you are the light of the world. You are different. You are the salt of the earth. You are different. In verse 16, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. He tells us once again that if we're Christians, we're different from the people of the world. In John chapter 15, verse 19. John chapter 15, verse 19. If ye were of the world, the world will love its own. If the world actually loves you, then you don't belong to Christ. You belong to the world. Your language, your family lifestyle, your festivities, your celebrations, the places you go, the things you drink, and the things you put in your mouth, everything, if the world loves you, then you belong to the world. You are not out of the world yet. Don't tell me you are born again if you are still chewing what you were chewing before, the hard drugs. And if you are still stimulating yourself with those hard drugs, and if you are still taking your cigarette and marijuana, don't tell me you are born again. When you are born again, there is a mighty difference in your life. The things you used to do, you do them no more. And the places you used to go, you go there no more. If the world is still appreciating you, and the world is still loving you, and the world is still embracing you, then you are not of God, you are of the world. In that verse 19, if ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. The very fact that the world is frowning at us, that's the evidence that we belong to the Lord. And the very fact that, you know, the worldly people will not want to come to our church and they say, I prefer that other church downtown. I prefer that other church on the mountain. I prefer that other church in the valley. I prefer that other church on the corner of the street. But that one they call deeper life. No, we hate that one. That gives us a, a mark that we actually belong to the Lord. They hate us. Because they will not accept. They want to keep on smoking their cigarettes. And they want to keep on taking their hard drugs. And they want to keep on embezzling money. They want to keep on in their fraud. They want to keep on in their worldliness. Because of that, they will not accept where we stand. And that is actually a past mark for us. Because it shows us if the world is rejecting us, then we belong to the Lord. If the world is accepting you, then you belong to the world. Then it tells us in Second Corinthians chapter 6. Second Corinthians chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 17. Wherefore, come out from among them. Their festivities. Their idolatrous ceremonies. And their groups or their gangs. Or their societies, secret societies, come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you and will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. What a revelation, what a commandment the Lord is giving us there. In Ephesians chapter 5, reading from verse 3. Your child of God, here is what the Lord is saying. That we come out of all those things in the world. They must not be in our lives. In uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 3. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become a saints between boys and girls. Between young men and young women, between married men and married women, it says, let not adultery, fornication, uncleanness, covetousness be once named among you, as it befeeds saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye you know, that no armonger, Adulterer, that is it. No unclean person, 
no covetous man who is an idolater. A covetous man is an idol worshiper, is worshiping money, is worshiping material things. And he can give up anything, he, he can give up the Bible because of gold and silver, because of money, because of material things. And he can abandon the worship of God because of material things. He's worshiping those material things. That's an idol worshiper. That's why the Bible says the covetous man is an idol worshiper, an idolater. They don't have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things comes the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be ye not therefore partakers of them. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Be different. That's the mark, that's the evidence you belong to the Lord. Be different. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful words of darkness, but rather reprove them. What do you think of the people that finish church on Sunday like this? And then immediately after the church service, they go to a kind of village meeting. Catholics are there. Traditional worshippers are there. And the regular old uh, historic churches are there. Traditional churches are there. And they say, we come from the same village. And then they will be drinking their palm wine, but I will not drink, but you are part of them. And they will be saying all that they are saying, but you are part of them. And all they are out in, and all the evil they are against the, other, against the other village, and against the other community, against the other clan. They are planning against them, but you are there. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, for it's a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Look at verse 14, the command, the command of the Lord, the challenge of the Lord. Wherefore, he says, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. And Christ shall give thee light. You see, when you come to the Lord, you come out of the things of the world. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. I'm reading to you from verse 14. Acts chapter 2 verse 14. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. It's a generation that is not thinking right. It's a generation that is not acting right. It's a generation that is not living right. It's a generation that is not behaving right. It's a generation whose heart is not turned towards God, it's turned towards evil. Save yourselves from this untoward generation, perverse generation. Then they that gladly received this word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls, and they continued. That's a secret, that you have become born again, and then you come out of the world to save yourself from this untoward generation. And now, after believing in the Lord, you continue. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. As we talk about uh, these people that are called out, called out of the world, so they can live a life pleasing to the Lord. What do they come out of? Number one, they come out of the abominations of the world. They come out of the abominations of the world. Number two, they come out of the affections of the world. Affections of the world. Number three, they come out of the ambitions of the world. Coming out of the ambitions of the world. They are the worldly people, they have their own ambitions. And it's a different kind of ambition. 
And the Lord is saying, come out of the ambitions of the world. Number four, they come out of the associations of the world. You won't be in those associations if you really belong to the Lord. How, what can we tell if somebody says, I'm a worker in the church, and he still belongs to those associations? Come out from there. Because if you're really going to get to heaven, and you're going to walk on this path that leads to life eternal, you come out of the associations of the world. Number five, come out of the agitations of the world. The agitations of the world. You know, the worldly people, you know, they get what they want to get from the government. You know, they twist the hand and twist the leg and twist the neck of the leadership so they can get what they want. Come out of the agitations of the world. Number six, come out of the amusements of the world. The music, the entertainment, their reception after marriage. The way they do their burial, as if they are going to spend all the income of their total life because of burial, come out of the amusements of the world. Number seven, come out of the apparel, appearance, adornment of the world. Come out of the apparel, the clothing, the appearance and the adornment of the world. Look at it one by one. Come out of the abominations of the world. In Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 18. I'm reading to you there from verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter, chapter 18, reading from verse 9. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, Thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. Anywhere you go, you might travel out of your country here and get to a West African country. They have their abominations. Or get to a Central African country, they have their abominations. Or you might go to the West America or Britain or France or wherever, they have their own abominations. You, when you get to the land, remember, you are a Christian. First of all, you are a Christian before you even think you are a Nigerian or before you think you are an African or before you think you are a Westerner. You are a Christian and if there is any abomination in any country, in any land, the Lord is saying as a man that you belong to the Lord, you will not partake of the abominations of that land. Every profession has its abomination. I, if you're a policeman, there are abominations in the police force. And if you are a market woman, there are abominations in the marketplace. If you're in the office, if you're a civil servant, there are some abominable things that are done. If you're in school, there are some abominations in those communities, in those schools. If you're a teacher in the teaching professions, there are abominations that are carried out. As a Christian, you are different, you are distinct, and you are distinguished as a child of God. You come out of the abominations in that profession. You know what the people do. You're a medical doctor or you're a nurse. There are abominations associated with everything that they practice, with some of the things they practice there. Although you still remain a doctor, although you still remain a nurse, you will not partake in the abominations of that profession. We are Christians and we have to be different from the people of the land. And the Lord is saying here, when thou art come, into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not learn. How do you do this thing? How do you practice this thing? How do you people have this and that? You will not even learn it. And you will not have their catalog. And you will not have all the things they are learning to do those evil things. Thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There, there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire or that use a divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch. You will not be, there shall not be a witch, a necromancer, a person that is consulting the dead, a 
among the people of God. A person that is reading the palms of people. Let me look at your palm and let me tell you your future, your destiny. As I look at your palm, it is abomination. And it says there will be nobody among the people of God that will have any kind of abomination like that. Or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirit, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God does drive them out from before thee. You will not partake in the abominations of the world. Number two, the affections of the world. The affections of the world. And you know that the world is totally taken up with what they call love, valentine, affection. And everything is lost. And you see today that everything is taken up with all that kind of loss, all that kind of evil thing. And there's nothing they want to advertise today. Uh, they did not put almost in a, a semi-naked woman. If they want to advertise, whatever it is, even ordinary, if you're advertising pencil, you're advertising biro, they'll put a woman by the biro. As if the women are the most 